You're listening to Kayak Flyer with your host, Sean. Tonight, we're brought to you by Tennessee Trailers Outdoor Adventure Trailers.com. I promised you that we would have Adam back on after he got done with his big vacation, everything else. Things have been absolutely nutty. We had one guest move up the time slot by two hours, which kicked Adam out. But Adam came back with a vengeance, buddy. You have brought us a great guest. Yeah, man. I'm so pumped to be back on. It's been way too long. It's, uh, It's hard to believe, like, we're pushing into the month of July and I feel like I haven't been on the podcast since like April. It's been like uh, quite the hiatus, but I'm super excited to be here. i um, super pumped to have Silas with us, a Jersey trout addict. He's coming to us all the way from uh, the East coast. So pumped to have you on, talk some fly fishing and some trout fishing. It should be a really good time. Yeah. I got a lot of bones to pick with him <laughs> from trout fishing. Uh, like how do you fillet them because i always have way too many bones whenever i eat of trout <laughs> i don't really keep them that often i, I don't, I don't like either. clean fish yeah <laughs> I don't really like that. yeah my son asked me one time he goes do you have a fillet knife i said why would i need that that i'd have to clean them no you know just it's i don't have time for that it's yeah. too much like work that it is and that's what fishing should never be like no. So you're in New Jersey. Yep. I didn't realize there was trout in New Jersey. There are. Not many. But there's a few. They're coming around. Uh, the water quality is getting a little bit better over the last couple of years. So there's some more wild trout around than there were, but they stock it pretty well. Um, it gets crowded, but there's rivers. You, yeah, so Adam, I'm, well, I'm curious because I, I follow your Instagram and I have for quite a while now. And, and that's how I, you know, I reached out to you. That's how I reach out to a lot of our guests because it's fun to kind of see what everybody else is doing in different parts of the country or even the world. And then I got to tell you, like the brown trout that you're catching and you post routinely, which are just amazing pictures of your fish. Like those are monsters that you're pulling out. I just had no idea that that type of fish was up I'm thinking Jersey, right? Well, but I assume like you're in the area, right? Right, right. Well, um, I also fish a few other states too. They're not all from, not every single one of them's from New Jersey. Even the though truth comes um, out. <laughs> the biggest trout that I ever caught on a fly rod actually is from New Jersey. So, um, but I, I fish in Pennsylvania and I fish in New York and I fish in New Hampshire and I. I you know, Virginia, sometimes I've been as far as down to Virginia, just anywhere I could get my, anywhere I could just go to, you know, be in the river or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's, it's more about the outside than it actually is about the fish. That's just the bonus. Um, yeah. You know, if you're fishing Pennsylvania, I don't know if you follow Tim Campsa or not, but he was, he's been on the show and he'll be back on this fall. Right. Hit him up, man. Tell him you've been on the show. That way you guys have something to complain about together. (laughs) Something to bitch about, right? (laughs) Yeah. You guys can sit there and bitch about what a horrible show it was the whole time. No, no. I mean, you know, Pennsylvania, I had heard had some nice trout and I figured Jersey did too. I mean, because when we think of Jersey, we think of right there next to the city. Yeah, and that's not like what New Elizabeth Jersey is. And, you know, right across from New York with all the smog and all that stuff. But it's there's a lot of mountains right over, you know, in between Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. It, it's pretty tall. 
um, the Delaware water gap is a real good fishery. It feeds a lot of rivers feed into that. So um, anywhere you fish close to that river in any of the three states, you have a really good chance of um, catching something really big that's never seen anybody or anything before, you know, but um, yeah, that's... it's different out here. I live on a trout yeah, yeah. stream. Um, I can walk right out in the backyard. They stock really big fish back there, but there's there's things as small as, you know, six inch and five inch native brook trout and things like that. But since COVID, it's the, the rivers have been packed. Like nobody went to work. They're supposed to be on the computer working, but they were all fishing. You know, there's already 20 million people out here. So it was like fucking those NFL assholes. Game. Sorry, can I curse? I didn't mean to curse. <laughs> no, no. I said those assholes out there fishing when you should be at work. Yeah, dude. It's uh, there was there was more people around than I'd seen in a long time. Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, speaking of that, with everybody around, I saw recently you lost your net, like your fish pond net. Wow. Right? Did you get that recovered? I don't want to talk about that. No, I just went oh, like no. I, I went out looking for it again, like hoping it would come back. You know what I mean? But I still haven't found it. I went to the oh, fly shop cool. down the street there and tried to, you know, maybe see if somebody brought it back. But I, I doubt it'll come back. Yeah, it is New Jersey. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> that's happened to me before. I lost. Um, it was not a fish pond net. It was. It was actually one of my backups. The original nets that a buddy gave me when I very right. first got into to, to fly fishing, and I, I was a hot mess anyway, just trying to figure everything out. I had all my gear wrapped around me and. I'd actually finally hooked into a fish and I was all pumped and excited. And then I go to net the fish and I reach back for it. Nothing. I reach back this way, nothing. And then I realize I've been without a net for at that point, probably a day or two, just not even having any yeah, idea. Yeah, you never it even knew it was missing. No, nah. no. That's the worst. Yeah. That is the worst. Yeah. And a good net. A good net and a good, you know, having a net with you can can save you so much aggravation, that's especially sure. fly fishing. Right. You know, I mean, that's uh, you really need a quality net. Right. Um, which is why we're happy that Stonefly Nets, stoneflynets.com supports our show. Oh, that, quality dude, that. I've seen Stonefly in the great nets. state of Arkansas. I, I've seen and, them on, uh, I guess. Yeah, I tell you what, dude, he, he makes some nice nets. Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah. But. Yeah, um, I would cry. It still if hurts I lost. so bad. It hit hurts to the bone and to lose that. I've had it for so long. I've rehabbed yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like you just ah, it is what it is. Charges to the yeah, game. Some like things it. just become part of you. Yeah, you know. If, if you I don't know, have I, it, you don't even know where to reach. You don't even know like what to do. Yeah, it's it's uh, and I don't think people understand a good fly rod and a good net are to the fly fisherman what a guitar feels like to a a great guitarist because it's, so. you've held it a certain way. You've got a pattern on it. Right. It becomes it a part falls of it. into place. Yeah. So you're fishing for these, uh, these different kinds of trout. I'm assuming you've got, you said Brooks. I'm assuming you'll have rainbows too. Cause they're like horse shit. They're everywhere. Yeah. Um, and, and the Browns, what is a go-to fly for you whenever you're fishing and which particular trout? Um, well, when it comes to things like like the big brown trout, they they like pretty much leggy. I don't throw many streamers. I do a lot of nymphing, and I do throw dries and grasshoppers. You can't go wrong with a grasshopper for something like a nice brown trout in the summer. Um, but I, I don't really change up flies too much as I do the size when it comes to the between the brown trout and the brook trout. The rainbow trout we have here are mostly most of them are stocked. To to find a wild one is really rare, and for the most part they'll be small, so little dry flies or something like that. They'll take like a size 18, like blue winged olive or something. But for the big browns, I just basically use pheas- my my go to fly would be a pheasant tail nine times out of ten whether it's Mm -hmm. six degrees or or 76 degrees some sort or some uh color of pheasant tail i would throw right away i'm right when i get out of the truck you know what i mean so they, they seem to like that pretty well um yeah it's it's really funny and i know adam can attest to this that 
you know, what we call guide flies, you know, flies that are easy to bang out, not a lot of materials. Those are the ones that everybody who like, is, no matter how complex a fly you tie, mm-hmm. those are the first ones you go to because they work. Right. You're absolutely right. And the point is, why am I going to spend 15 minutes to tie one fly <laughs> when I'm yeah. going to lose it in 15 minutes? Like, you know, the pheasant tails, they, they can whip up real easy in a thousand colors. Um, yeah. You know, just yeah. like a hair's ear. Yeah. I've been cracking my head against the wall this week trying to tie a chimera fly, which is supposed to represent four or five. And I keep messing it up. Right. And I don't know. It's not a hard fly to tie. I just may be in. Throw bigger. it anyway. Yeah, but work. I'm like, why am I even doing this? Right. You know, it's still a nymph at the end of the day. Right, right. You know? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's until, co- it's until last year for me was by far the most productive fly anytime that I was out. So are you, Silas, do you tie a lot of your own flies or do you, you hit up the uh, fly? Just shirt? about yeah. all of them. Yeah. Um, what I don't tie is, I don't tie very small dry flies. Like if I... I'll tie a size twenty WD forties, but I, I don't go any smaller than that. With that's just thread and a wing casing. It's just you know what I mean. But yeah, a dry fly to get the hackle to no, it's got to be like size twelve or ten. Yeah, you know or something yeah, big. Sean's laughing because Sean doesn't tie tie anything below a one on. He can't hear. Oh yeah, I hear you, man. <laughs> I hear you. I'm hey. throwing meat, baby. I'm hey. throwing meat. Big burgers catch big fish. Exactly. <laughs> you know you're not going to catch artic- you know you're not gonna catch any little brookies. <laughs> is what it I is, tied man. my first 16 the other day, and I thought I was going to go blind. Doing right. it. And that was because of what I had to drink in order to get my mind in the right case right. to tie right. it. Because I'm like, you really, I'm going to do this? You able to see right. Once your eyes get crossed, it turns to one. Exactly. <laughs> you know I'm going to see double yeah. and tie the middle one. Right. That's when it becomes the magnifying glass. Yeah. But yeah. No, Adam yeah, ties tie those small own, flies. Right. I tie all my own flies for the most yeah. part. Um, like I said, I buy 10 or 12 really small dry flies a year, but the rest I'll tie. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sean and I are big fly tires too, and he's Sean. Uh, you do a lot of smallmouth fishing. That's kind of that's your jam, right? Yeah. So of, is the articulated, the bigger streamers and whatnot, right. but you also tie a lot of the trout stuff too. But I'm typically tying a lot of the small stuff. That's what I prefer. I, I nothing too crazy. Like I'm not, I'm not tying like a size thirty or anything nuts. Like, yeah, that's it's not just yeah. pointless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, Twenty is about the smallest I've ever right. tied. And even that feels real silly, honestly, for the water that I'm fishing in the Midwest. Like I just tying it just simply good to do it, but right. uh, I don't really fish them all that often. Do they have trout in Kansas? Uh, no. So I'm, <laughs> I, <laughs> I am, uh, I live in Kansas city. So I'm like on the Missouri, Kansas border, but I've got to drive three hours at a minimum to get on a trout stream. And it's a, oh. uh, State park stock trout. That's the best I can do. It's either drive three hours east or I I... drive three hours to like Denver. And it's a lot easier to go three hours east. So, (laughs) can I I say this real quick? He lives in like the worst part of Missouri ever because he has Kansas City style barbecue and I'm two and a half hours from Memphis barbecue. Oh, so you have (laughs) And we all know Memphis dry rub is better. Than no. Kansas City style barbecue. No one even star with me, Sean. And you cannot argue barbecue with a Kansas City boy. There's just no way. Well, I went to college out of Michigan, way. so I know a little Midwest. But there you go. There's yeah. plenty of trout out there, though. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. 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 I tell you what. There's a there's a reason we when we catch a fish that looks like it'll be good. And there's a reason why we call it a pig. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> the only thing worth eating is a pig. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But it's oh, good though. I'll tell you what. I like I've had the Kansas City barbecue and the Memphis. They're both pretty good. Yeah. Oh that, yeah. I'm gonna tell you what. I, I don't know. I've got a cousin who lives in uh Minnesota. Minnesota? And Minnesota, he brought his girlfriend. Hey. They were yeah, they were going through I forget where they were they were going to Nashville. And they stopped and I gave him a pork steak. 
uh, what took them out to eat we had a pork steak which is a pork shoulder that right. you know like you would normally barbecue but it's sliced into steaks and neither one of them had ever had it i'm like oh my lord you gotta like, have you know it. you want barbecue come to missouri right you know did they love it and I'll, they really did they really liked it a lot and then i'm like well let's go fishing and she's like no i don't want to be out on the water <laughs> come on <laughs> you got to enjoy everything about it the, the, might as well yeah the freshwater game um warm water i guess the smallies down here are king really um we've got to drive to trout steam stream stream not all of us can be not walking out our lucky. back door to catch yeah cookies. i'm pretty lucky with that one you know yeah no kidding but uh fly tying i think is well i mean it's relaxing for me i know that most of the time but there's something about catching a, a fish on a fly that you've tied and when you're you know fishing warm water you're tying a lot of big flies when you've got cold water you're tying a lot of small flies and i i just think it's interesting how we look at the flies we tie do you ever just sit down and tie some flies that you realize are going to sit in your box and you're never going to get them out because they yeah. you have confidence flies and the yeah. other ones? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And every time you open them, you look at them, you're like, I'm going to use this. And you grab it and you look at it. And you put the thing right back. It's like, nah, not today. <laughs> and then it's, if it's ever your last fly, it'll always work. But it's like 10 years after you tied it. And you get the one fish to hit it, and then it just completely goes to crap and unravels because it's all like <laughs> dry rotted. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> why do we, why do we do that? Why do we sit and look at flies and say, "Oh, I'm going to tie that and fish it," and then we never fish it? I don't know. It's a good thought at the time, until it doesn't work. It could be one cast. You get it one cast, and you're like, "This like this thing ain't going to work." You know, it's all, it's all about what you think. Forget if the fish like it, I guess, you know, at that point. Yeah. I it's call it like tough. the Frankenstein fly. Like it might have like a tiny little bit of a certain feather, a little bit of a certain color of, of thread, a couple of different size bead that I'm not usually going to use and throw it all together. And it, it never looks great. And it just sits no. in the corner of the fly box. Right? But at the end of the day, it's not really about whether we think it looks good or not. That's what we got to get past, I guess. Right. Yeah, no doubt. You know what yeah. I mean? Cause they, I mean, I've seen guys throw with the orange, something orange they made with like a cat sweater and some other <laughs> shit. And I've seen it work. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Now I don't have anything that looks like this. And this guy's kicking my ass with the old sweater and some sock material. You know what I mean? Like, come on. <laughs> well, I just, I find it to be hilarious that I have like my fly box. I keep an extra fly box, a cheap one um, for reject flies. And <laughs> for Christmas presents, I give out my reject flies to my friends. Who don't tie. <laughs> and it's they so catch cool more than me. And then I, I get so mad. They don't even want them. Yeah. I'm like, that was too ugly for you to catch a fish on. <laughs> They're like, have you seen your cast? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> That's what we do, though. It, it's, it gets a, uh, it makes you kind of crazy, but I guess we feel like we're sane, but other people like look at you like, the fuck do you care what color that fly is? You know what I mean? It, I don't care about where you're going well, fishing. <laughs> do you take the time to make the top of your hoppers pretty even though the fish will only see them from the that's bottom? That's a really good question because I probably I think I do. <laughs> you gotta have like the wraps and then you're right, the fuck the fish is never gonna see the other yeah. side. I did that with Thank the, you uh, for that. You just saved me like a half hour per yeah. grasshopper. I did that with a, a bass frog that I had tied up and uh it's called a bass turd. And right. I was sitting there taking my uh taking my Sharpie and putting on like the black dots on the top. And I was, right. I was real strategic. I'm like, I don't want it to look like a, a dice or anything. And I put them all on there and then I got, man, that looks so great. And then like, just thought about it. I'm like, it makes it's no difference. It literally makes no difference at all. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great though. <laughs> but if it lands upside down, maybe and flips over, they'll see it. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe first impression. <laughs> yeah, as it's dragged across across the water, it looks like it's missing a limb. Right. 
It's it's so silly what we do. I mean, and really, when you when you sit down and you think about it, and you sit there and you go through it, the things we do to tie flies that right. fish and won't the materials, notice. The materials that you try and find, like you're petting random cats, you know, trying to... <laughs> Like you're sizing the cat up, like that's long cat fur. Right? That would be great for like you know some tail for a little bit of tail on a, a streamer or something. You know what I mean? You just carry like a, a random cat brush in your back pocket because you never know. Right, what you're right, across, right, right. Like just or, like, or you're like Adam and you're banned from the your Natural cat. History Museum because he's stolen too many birds that were stuffed. Hey, buddy, I like right. authentic material. Okay, pocket full he's of feathers. Got- He's got a dodo feather fly. <laughs> you can't miss with that thing. No. That's, that's, that's part of the psyche, you know? Yeah, no kidding. Everything's fair game. Now, are you like Adam Sir, uh, Silas? Are you out there picking up roadkill? No. I haven't gotten that crazy yet, but I did get uh, a little bit of deer hair from the, the deer that the coyotes dismantled in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam go. Adam keeps a can of spray paint in his car. And when he's driving on the weekends, he spray paints a circle around all the roadkill. And then on his way home, anything that doesn't have paint around it, he picks up and shaves off for dubbing. <laughs> You'll never know if that's true or not, because it will not be confirmed or denied. Well, if you ever ship me some flies and I see some orange, you know, a little bit of orange <laughs> leftovers in the fur there, then yeah, I, you'll I know promise. my sword. Yeah, the fluorescent orange dubbing. Yes, it look good for eggs and things like that. You know, no, I'm not kidding. Yeah, you Thanks know, you can you, you can always put you out. They make these live traps to catch squirrels, and so you catch one, you put on some welding gloves, and you grab it, and then you just shave it and release it back into the wild. You're going to squish it to death because you can't hold that thing's going to climb you as soon as you grab it. It's going to be, it's going to climb right you, you got to put a can of peanut butter on its head first. <laughs> so it's not so traumatic. Yeah. So, yeah no, Sean, 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 right Sean, 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 you got to be resourceful. You got to be resourceful. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Dubbing becomes a renewable resource. I've, I've ruined a few blenders. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the smoothies yeah. the smoothies were a little fuzzy you know but I mean, what are you gonna do <laughs> that's, not, that's organic that's what that is nothing yeah. wrong with organic fiber fiber i'll help organic. you out buddy <laughs> okay so silas you started this past year um doing a little bit of guiding on the side right that's that's kind of new for you isn't it is that what i read what is it oh the geotag you started doing some guiding right I can't really hear what you said. I thought I saw or read that you started doing some guiding. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. I started doing that, but now I don't do that anymore. It was a little too far. Um, ah. It was like, uh, I don't mind. It was it was about a three-hour drive each way, um, which I don't mind if I was going to go drive that far. It, it, this is not going to make any sense and be by myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I get it. stay over and fish the next day. But to drive that far just, you know, for a little bit of change and then drive all the way back home, it that kind of doesn't – it didn't make much much sense. If it's not going to be a really substantial amount of money, then it really didn't make – for a little bit of money, I'd rather not make any of it and just go fishing alone. If that yeah. makes any sense. For sure. That makes total sense. I understand that perfectly. I've been fishing with Adam. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to ask where you did your guiding uh, since you had talked about, like, obviously fishing in multiple states and different areas and whatnot. up there with all the access to different water and whatnot. But, um, I mean, I guess from what I tell, like, brown trout's your jam, right? Like, that's that's your go-to if you can. Yeah. Um, I, I... Actually, I fish for just about whatever trout wants to bite, but the bonus is a wild rainbow or a wild brook trout or something where people don't normally expect them to be. Um, 
because a lot of people out this way, they fish the really small streams for them. And that's where you'll find, you know, that's where you can go catch a wild rainbow, a wild brook trout, and a wild brown trout is in these little teeny small streams we have. Um, they're actually getting pretty clean, I'd imagine. Um, but, I mean, you're looking at catching, you know, two and five inch fish, which is fun all in itself if you, you're fishing with the right rod. Um, but I have, let's say I'm 46. So ever since I've gotten the driver's license, I've driven anywhere to go fishing. So it's not like I've, most of the spots, probably 98% of them have been just me over the years getting in the car before GPSs and all this, I mean, like late nineties, we didn't have cell phones and everything. And just like looking on a paper map and just taking off and being gone all day in the car, you know, like that's how I found, you know, most of these places. And I'm actually looking into um, getting certified in New York state to guide. Um, okay, cool. Pennsylvania is okay, but uh, New York state's a little easier. Um, the woods are a little more open. It's easier for people to, to cast without me having to get it. it. You know, it's all about no hassle. I don't really like the hassle. Fishing is, is just an outlet. You know, it's um, it's just something that I actually have to do once a week. If I don't do it once a week, I'll probably go crazy. And, and I mean, in my younger days, I quit jobs for it. And, you know, I, I need to take off Friday. I want to go fishing. Well, if you take off, you're fired. Well, I quit, and then I go find a new job a week later. Go fish for a week. <laughs> I guess I better find another job, and then go find another job. You know, the twenties were great. You had a great time when you're in your twenties. You can't do that shit now, though. You know, it's like okay, I'll be at work. What time did you say again? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> early. I'll be there early. Yeah, I know. Situations change, right? But the passion's still there. So you just got to find a way to make it work within the parameters of real life the older you get. That's for sure. That's the only difference. Yeah. It's still the same the drive and just, just, I don't like, like, I don't watch much TV. Like I told you guys, I, right now, I'd probably be asleep. I wake up at like 4 15 and I try and be out of the bed. Like I woke up at 7 the other day and I had no idea what to do with myself. You just I was like, your I thought, day, didn't and it was Sunday. Yeah. Like, I didn't have anything to do. I thought I was late for shit. Like, you know, so, yeah, I don't I do not do much. It's If I'm not outside, then I'm, you know, asleep or hanging out with my wife or whatever. But, yeah. You know, I don't know, you know, what you've thought about it, about, you know, your guy. I know there are several guide schools. I know several people that have gone to them. Um, I don't know what your situation is like where you're at in Jersey, but – cotter arkansas on the white river um a friend of mine started guiding there part-time wound up leaving his full-time job and is making so much stupid money right. guiding down there I've he's charging it, yeah. more for the same amount of time for two people than the saltwater guide i've taken out multiple times charges for four wow I mean, it is flipping ridiculous. Right. The White River is a good place. Yeah, one of our friends of the show, he's a guide up in Alaska, and he is even thinking about guiding Cotter in the wintertime just because there's a need. Right. And so some of these places that were never thought of, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania that were never thought of great trout fishing areas. Everybody thought of Montana, Idaho, Colorado, even New Mexico to a certain extent for some of right. their, their trout that they have, like the Apache. Um, there's a need. There's a large need now for people in the guiding industry that understand what to do and what to throw and how to do it. Right. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a good person for that. I'm entirely too jealous. I'd push them down and grab the fly rod and reel it in myself. No, I'm good with that. I, I don't mind teaching people stuff. That's funny, though. Yeah, I, oh, no, I'd knock them. I'd push them out of the boat and be like, it's mine! <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, I don't mind teaching and tying flies for people and showing them, you know, showing them the ropes. It's just, you know, 
I'd rather have it a little closer to home if I was going to try and do it. And I think in New Jersey, all you just need to do is have an LLC. You don't even need any certifications. Like, you know, New York. In certain it. states or certain ways. Yeah. Because I don't know if Ben, I don't know if Ben had to go to guide school, but I know Andrew did. Um, but he goes, and now he's like gone from June till October. Mm-hmm. And they're fishing like 18 hours mm-hmm. a day, flying in little bitty planes, right. watching for grizzly bears. You know, that's living the life. That's a little extreme. I wouldn't mind doing that. You get yeah, to carry what you want. Life. See, the problem with New Jersey is you don't get to carry any weapons. All I got is a knife. You know, if I run into oh, a 400 yeah. no. pound black bear, I'm in trouble. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, for real. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, after the show, I I hit you up on Instagram. After the show, I'll send you Andrew's info. Okay, awesome. I appreciate that. So yeah. Simon, you've been able to fish, obviously, a lot over towards the East Coast. Anywhere, like bucket list places that you want to go fishing that you have yet to get out to? Hmm. I think he wants to say Missouri. <laughs> Depends on what the smallmouth look like. And and can I bring my conventional gear to fish for the smallmouth? Because I don't throw yes, flat rod for them. I throw, I throw jerk baits in the whole nine yards when it comes to bass. There you go. I don't play around. I need to hook them and get them out of the water. Um, exactly. <laughs> bucket list somewhere. I guess everybody's would be somewhere like Argentina, probably. Yeah. But somewhere probably realistic. I don't know. I could probably could do British Columbia or something, flying somewhere where, you know, I wouldn't have to see anybody for a while and there's just rivers around, you know, something like that. British Columbia is probably probably the most realistic bucket list I would think about that I use. Yeah. That I think or, about uh, all the time. What's Brook that? Trout, I think like Brook Trout, would that be like your go to up there? Probably. Because they have some monsters up there. I, I probably would want to, you know, find the small water with the big fish. My, my thing I like to do is, is try and find these rivers that aren't popular. Um, so like, I'm not out fishing these rivers where people have the books written about, you know, out in the cat skills and all these other things. I'm on the other ones that you have to zoom in real far onto the GPS to see what the name of it is, you know? So, um, a lot of people think that a, a river has to be a certain size to hold a certain size fish, but I mean, if you can catch a 19 or 20 inch brown or rainbow trout out of, you know, a river that's maybe 15, 20 foot wide, that's that's pretty satisfying. That's enough for me, I would imagine. Yeah, no I never never really thought about it, but the cat skills, have you hooked up with Mark Usick yet? No. Uh, he's written a couple of, of books. He's been on the show a couple times. Super cool dude. Uh, just check him out, Mark Usick on, I believe it's just Mark Usick on Instagram. Mark Usick. Friggin' neat guy, man. But if you want to go fish, he he built hot rods and this and that, and then he's just sort of become a, I guess, just a trout bum is the way to describe him. Adam, how would you describe him? Yeah. You guys would have a hell of a time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he, um, he's he got quite the background. Like you said, building hot rods, and he used to climb like uh, – cell phone towers and do repairs like hundreds crazy. of feet up in the air just like a crazy crazy now that is kind of crazy job. and then um but uh yeah he's he is all about fishing he's fishing 24 7 no matter what he just started writing down all of his thoughts and and whatnot and stories and collecting them over time about mishaps or fun things that have happened and he's right. got a couple of books he's working on another one and he's just a yeah. cool dude to kind of follow yeah, and you're right in between him and Tim. I mean, you need to get a hold of some of these. You've got some guys there that have some really good chops. I mean, as good as yours, That'd you know, uh, uh, you know, you may be a little bit better. You know what I mean? Um, but I think it would be a hell of a damn good time to For hang sure. out with those guys and then come back on the show and tell me how much fun it was because I can't. I'm always for networking. It's, right it's, I was just telling somebody earlier, it's not what you know, it's about who you know. Yeah. And that's the funny thing is, and that's one thing about this podcast that I've absolutely loved is being able to meet and talk to people, you know, and we sit here and we laugh about guide flies because as much as we don't want it to be true, it is true. Oh, it's true. You know, 
And how far are you from Salt? I am just about two hours now. Okay. Have you ever gone down and done any saltwater fly fishing? Not since, not since I was younger. No. Okay. No, I. You know, I don't know. I somewhere along the line, I, I grew up hunting and stuff. You know, with 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 rabbit dogs and bird dogs, pheasant hunting and stuff. Um, I'm kind of a woods person. The, about the only time you'll see me heading towards any kind of salt waters if my wife wants to go to the beach. Other gotcha. than that, um, there's no trees. When I look out at the ocean and I don't see anything, it's just nah. You know, like when I'm the fuck am yeah. I look, what am I looking at? You know, it's just kind of yeah. I find okay. that. And I, I think Adam will agree with me on this. Growing up where you only see trees. Right. And the ocean is something you've seen once or twice. Right. When you're, you know, even, even I think I was even in my 20s, like the second time I saw the ocean. Wow. And going to the ocean is like a big deal. Right. You know. And going and doing saltwater fishing, and I, I just wondered how, what it, I mean, I think that's it's really interesting that you prefer the trout over the saltwater. Right. Well, when I was a kid, I like, you know, I went down to the beach and chased bluefish off the shore. But I was, you know, high school and early twenties and things like that. But the more I got into the working world, I guess, like I said, the more you started working and having to deal with people on a daily basis and not fishing as much, I guess I just kind of gravitated towards the solitude of nothingness around, you know, just animals or the deer or bald eagles or whatever it may be. Um, I guess that's what did it. I guess, like you said, growing up by the beach, you kind of take for granted or you don't, you know, it's not as big of a deal as it would be to someone who, even though the, the Jersey Shore and all that shit, yeah, people still make a big deal out of going to the beach, even though they're like, well, it could be five minutes away, and it's a freaking crap show. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, but, yeah. but when you like that kind of stuff, and when you're younger, that's absolutely, you know. But when you get older, you're like, get the hell away from me. Why you got to put your towel right here? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. go that way. <laughs> and I think the beaches that, you're around are a little bit different than the ones I drive to. Yeah. Don't drive out to these beaches. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, when we go, when we go to Louisiana, we go like to grand Isle where the population's like 65 in the winter. Now I would go to the beach for that. Yeah. And redfish and shark and sea trout and the occasional alligator dolphins redfish um, is like uh bass fishing kind of isn't it yeah redfish they like you to put it in front of them and if you get it in front of them they're not going to say no but they're spooky as hell so mm-hmm. you've really got to be careful they get into super skinny water too like yeah they will catch- have their their entire backs out of the water right, right as they eat crabs and shrimp and stuff like that I saw some guys right. from South Carolina fishing for them while we were in South Carolina not too long yeah. ago, a couple years back. But I've never well, I think the that's an, that's really an underrated place in my opinion. Yeah. The Carolinas. Carolinas, yeah, you bet. Chesapeake Bay and all that. There, there's a lot of like standing grass and all kinds of things down there. I've been down there and a bunch you're of not, times. And you're not that far from if you if you if you depending on where you place yourself in the state, you can be equal distance to the coast and to the Smoky Mountains to trout fish. Yes. The, the Smoky Mountains, I guess, to get to the top of them, uh, probably about five or six hours. About the same amount of time yeah. as it would take to get to Niagara Falls or something like that, like to, to the border. I guess that's about where I am geographically. Yeah. Just, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean... I've fished the Smokies a couple of times. I've caught a couple of fish out there. The The last trip I was out there, I had the wife drop me off. And she's like, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to fish. She's like, Whoa, well, how am I going to meet you? Because there's no cell service. I'm like, right. well, I'll be back here at this point in time. And she's like, well, don't get eaten by a bear. I'm like, oh, I'll try not. 
<laughs> I'll try not to. No promises. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna. I mean, hell, you're. I mean that that water is cold and fast, and it probably yeah, wasn't the smartest thing to go on my own. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. you know, we all do silly things in our quest for trout. And uh, what is it? I guess what I want to ask, and, and and Adam, this goes for you as well too, because I'm the warm water guy here. What is it about trout that the two of you just are fanatical about? Hmm. I think number one for me would be the places where they live. Um, that would be number one. That's probably the only reason that it, it uh, soothes my adventurous side. I get to just wander around. If I catch a fish or two, it's a bonus. But I think what it is about them is where it takes me, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good. That's well said. I, I would agree with that. You know, I'd also say, you know, yes, earlier, Silas, are there trout in Kansas? And there's not, right? Like, so I grew up fishing conventional tackle, so lakes, ponds, so largemouth, some crappie fishing, a lot of panfish, right? And um, I kind of got away from fishing the older I got because it just wasn't very appealing. And I got into trout fishing just five or six years ago, so in my 30s. And that just kind of opened up this entire new world of fishing that I didn't know even existed. Right. I had, I had no clue what fly fishing really was. I didn't. And so getting out and seeing, to your point, where these fish live, just how beautiful it is, but then also seeing like the different techniques that are involved. So it can, it can be very technical. It can also be extremely simple too, if you right. want it to be depending upon where you are. But I think that's what I really like about it is the, the amount of variety in terms of fishing that it's provided to me. Cause I'm still learning, right? Like only doing this a handful of years, still green. Right. And, uh, that's the I thing think you're always learning. Yeah. yeah. With any fishing, you're always learning, man. Yeah. Silas, I, I just think it's cute that he's uh, 10 years younger than us and has only been trout fishing for five or six years. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I, we I were trout off, fishing when he was in elementary school. <laughs> I started off just like just like you guys did, though, pan fishing and pond hopping. Yeah. You know? But, yeah, the yeah. knees the knees don't like where the trout live anymore, that's for sure. Yeah. The next Tell me day about is like, it. holy smokes, <laughs> what was I thinking about? Yeah, I can climb yeah. back. Yeah, I'll be up there in no time. You get up to the top, like, I need a seat. <laughs> I don't mind walking to the fish. I mind walking back from the fish. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Well, I think I got I think smart. That... I got smart in my old age. You know, now I just park and I walk first. And I fish back. So no matter what, I'm headed back towards the car. If I figure I'm going to walk five miles, I'm just going to head out in the morning and just fuck it. I'm going to walk that five miles and just work my way back. Now I don't have a choice. I'm just going to be up. Either way, I'm headed back towards the truck. I don't have to worry about it getting dark or any of that crap. Shut up, Cooper. <laughs> you got it. You got to remember what that's like when you're out there and you're having a great day fishing and you look at the clock and you realize that you are not going to make it back by yeah. dark. Nope. Nope. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it gets dark even faster when that happens. It's like, how did it go from 530 to 945? <laughs> like, what the, what's, how did this happen? And where the hell's my flashlight? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I know exactly what you mean. You got 35 things you don't need. The one thing you need, you don't have. Because you're not going to be out here. Last cast was no. four hours ago. I'll be yeah. home early. I'll be home, I'll be home by a supper. Yep. You roll in 10 minutes before breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Tired, wet, beat. Just beat to death. Yeah. We're good. At our age, it takes three days to get over a two-day fishing trip. Well, I... I, I Live on Epsom salts now. I've just discovered that uh, I'm officially my grandfather. <laughs> hey, buddy, it ain't the years, it's the miles. Let me just tell you that right now. <laughs> For sure. 
I just figured that out. It'd really bring me back to life, man. I couldn't move yesterday. You'd have been talking to me. I would have been laying in the bed. <laughs> it's it's same thing like a used car, man. I've seen some that look great, but they've had the hell run out of them. Ah, yes, sir. <laughs> oh Lord. Uh, now you got. <sighs> Well, we've got, we're, we're 45 minutes in and I know you've got to go get up in the morning. I want to be respectful of your time. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start to wrap everything up. Um, Adam, I'm going to let you go ahead and, uh, see what you want to hit on before we get ready to wrap things down. Yeah, no, this has been awesome. Really enjoyed it. Um, Silas, anything you want to plug for our, our listeners, maybe your Instagram handle or anything else that you're actively involved in, you can let everybody know. Um, well, I guess they could just catch me on Jersey Trout Addict. I don't, it's, I don't really do it for anybody and the followers or any of that shit. I'm not trying to get into the famous. I just like to share my pictures and shit, man. That's it. Yeah. All right. So now let's make them Insta famous. No, guys. no, no, it's all good. I don't, I don't. No, let's we'll, do yeah, we'll hashtag see. Silas bikini. <laughs> hey, don't do that. It might pop up with me with a bikini on. I used to drink a lot. <laughs> That's the point. Have you out there in a pair of shorty shorts holding that trout up, covering up your boobs like the girls do on Instagram? Oh, or TikToking or whatever that's called. Oh, man. Oh, no. That's all Adam's Instagram is. Why not, yeah, man? Guess. You guys don't even know. You don't even know, man. No, we don't. Uh, hey, for real though, Silas, I, I do. Uh, your your Instagram page is is great to follow, man. I, I love to see what you're out there doing. And to your point, Thanks, like, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, it, keep sharing it because it's it's nice to see. There's so much just crap out there, even on like social media. It's just terrible. So it's nice. It's to called fly. kayak flyer. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> the crap is called kayak flyer. Exactly. You gotta stay away from that. <laughs> no, but it's good stuff, man. Thanks. I appreciate it, guys, for real. It's yeah. awesome. Dude, um, what weight fly rod do you use? Mainly. Um, mainly? Uh, 10 foot four weight. Four weight? Wow, yes. cool. Um, I use a 10 foot four weight, and I oversize it. I use five weight. Um, I don't use a, a heavy five weight weight forward line with it, but I use a five weight weight forward, and... Um, it works pretty well when it comes to nymphing and things like that. I don't euro nymph with it, but I guess you could call it a euro nymphing rod. Um, I, uh, you and Adam have your information. Uh, send him your information. Let me mail you a leader. A yeah. leader? Awesome. A leader. Cutthroat for Old Leader is one of our sponsors. I'll mail a uh, leader to, to Silas here for being a guest on the show. And if you want a chance to win your own leader, um, like and comment on uh the youtube channel or when i post this up on facebook like and comment and i'll pick one person to also win the same leader that silas is going to get so we'll have a giveaway tonight silas will get a little something as so a thank you for being on the show thanks guys. and you guys our listeners will get a little something too so just uh kyle ludwig's going to be mad because i still haven't mailed his because i'm waiting <laughs> him to take me fishing <laughs> you just hold it over him huh hold it hostage man Dude, it's cheaper for me to drive to his house than it is for me to mail, mail him a leader. Yeah, and probably faster too with the U.S. Post. Oh yeah, way faster. Am I allowed to give that shot? Am I, am I allowed to shoot that shot there? No, you can shoot that shot anytime you want to. All day long, man. All day we are long. a non-governmental agency here. We are. The government awesome. is bad. In case you haven't noticed. <laughs> yes i got into a big argument with a friend of mine the other day it wound up being a little bit political so i don't want to get into it but basically i'm like dude you know you have you're you're working for a living to get stuff to enjoy to make your life better and then somebody just comes and takes money from you i'm like no <laughs> no i saw that it's not right no do you, do you know how many fly tying materials I could may pay uh, buy if I didn't have to pay taxes? Oh, <laughs> well, even you shouldn't have to. Period. You know what I mean? And it's a lot. It's damn near thirty three cents on the dollar. I mean, I'm not hitting oh, my hell where you are. Hammers. Yeah, huh? Yeah, 
it's yeah. freaking crucial. I yeah. like I said, I'm hitting my hand on hammers and, and nails and cutting myself and shit for you know basically sixty six cents. Yeah. 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 No, no, dude. You got to get out here to the Midwest, baby. You got to get down here in South Missouri, North Arkansas, get you a guide service set up, dude. Mm. I'm half tempted to just go build a little place in, like, you know, and live like a Keebler elf, just in a tree oh. somewhere away from everyone, uh, you know, and just sell. Well, Ted Kaczynski, just stay away from the post office. That's right. it. <laughs> That's it. Don't, don't go Unabomber on us. No, no, it'll take forever to get here. There was something holding at our post office. It's right down the street. It was holding for three weeks. All I had to do was drive down and get it. I didn't even know it was there. Dude, a buddy of mine had bought something, and it sat for three days at the post office and then went to South Carolina and then came back. And came back? See that? And came back. How many stamps did it have on it when it got back? Not, not and enough. Dude, it looked like <laughs> it had just been run over by a stamp machine. <laughs> Look like a collage of stamps, probably, you know? Yeah. You know, Adam mailed me three flies the other day. He put 18 stamps on there because he didn't want the government to get mad at him because he's on a watch list. I got to be careful, bro. I got to be careful. How much did you have to pay when it got to your house? You probably owed something, too. Oh, I owed like $36. Yeah. <laughs> the envelope wasn't regulation. <laughs> If somebody would have sat on it, that hook would have been a weapon of ass destruction. Yeah, ass destruction. <laughs> oh, no. Done. That's it. All right, yeah, I think we're out, guys. That's awesome, guys. Uh, Daddy's getting a little loopy here. I think we're uh, I think we're going to be out. Guys, check out Jersey Trout Addicts. Um, great page. Uh, Latrell's Fly Shop. Did I get that right? I always want to say Latrell's Fly Fishing, but it's Latrell's Fly Shop. Yep, you got it, buddy. Yep. And, um, hey, uh, well, quick shout out to Dooley. Uh, Nick Dooley's got his brand new store open as brick and mortar. If you're in that area, Illinois and Quincy, Illinois, go there. Dooley's Fly Fishing save 15% on everything with promo code kayak. Help him out. Please support the rest of our sponsors, guys. This has been great. I'm glad my microphone is fixed. I'm glad that Silas is here with us because he is a hoot. And I want to thank, thank Adam for doing such a great job being a, a major part of this show. Perfect. So, guys, we will see you all next week. <laughs>